Hi again everyone. In this video we're going to discuss more about determining and classifying critical points of functions of two variables. Now the example that we're going to look at is it involves the following f. Now the a here is a positive constant and we're asked to determine and classify all of the critical points of this function and a little hint discuss the cases a equals 2, a between 0 and 2, and a greater than 2 separately. Now, this is a longer example and a slightly more difficult example than the standard examples you see uh, in this area. But before we get to the example, let's motivate the subject. Well, first of all, functions of two variables, they empower us to model more complicated phenomena. And secondly, in applied math and engineering, critical points and determining inputs that lead to maximizing or minimizing functions, they turn up all the time, so it's important to understand the ideas associated with them. Now, for this particular example, let's, let's build our intuition. I'm going to discuss the case A equals 2 first. Now, I can see just from the nature of f that if I have a 2 for a then I can factorize the first three terms. And in particular I can factorize down to something that will give me a positive value of, it, of f. In particular, if x equals y, then this is 0 and I'm left with 7. Now, in particular, if x equals y, then the 7 is actually achieved. So what we can say from this just algebra, algebraic manipulation is that if a equals 2 here then f has a minimum along the line x equals y the minimum value of f is 7 and in particular it's a global minimum because it holds for all x and y. Now notice I didn't use any derivatives or any um, second derivative test there, I just used basic manipulation. Okay, so that's the case A equals 2. Now, for these cases, um, we're going to use the standard calculus approach and involve the so-called second derivative test. So, first of all, let's rule out the case A equals 2. And in the critical points of F, they occur when we set the partial derivatives equal to 0. So here we've got two simultaneous equations. Let's calculate these partial derivatives by the subscript f sub x means df dx, or the partial derivative of f with respect to x. And similarly, f sub y means df dy, the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So, for our function up here, let's calculate df dx and df dy. So to calculate df dx, we imagine all the y is a constant and differentiate normally with respect to x. So in this case we're going to get the following. Now remember a is a constant and to calculate df dy we imagine all the x's are constant and differentiate normally with respect to y. Remembering again that a is a constant. So I'm going to get something like this. Okay, so we set both of these 
equal to zero and solve. That's an A. Okay, so two simultaneous equations, we can solve these by um, substitution. So just rearranging the first equation and substitute in here for x. Substitution will give us the following. So I can take out a factor of y. Okay, so let's consider this equation here. Firstly, either y is 0 or this expression in brackets is 0. Now, we've made the assumption here that a is positive and not equal to 2. So actually, this can never be 0. The only other alternative is that y equals 0. Okay, so this is the y component of our critical point of f. Let's calculate the x component. Well, we can go back, substitute in for y, and come up with x equals 0. So thus, our critical point is zero, 0, So we've answered the first part of the question there. We've determined the critical points. There's one of them, and it occurs at 0, 0. Now the next thing is to classify the critical point. Now to do that, we're going to use an idea called the second derivative test. Now it's quite long, but um, essentially we introduce this, this D um, definition here involving second order der partial derivatives. And then we look down, calculate these derivatives, and see which of these cases occur. And then we can um, make some conclusions about whether f has a local max, a local min, or a saddle point. Now, a saddle point is just a generalization of a point of inflection. OK, so let's, uh, let's calculate these, these derivatives. So the second part of the question, we classify our critical point via the second derivative test. Okay, so let's calculate this uh, this d here at a general point x, y. Okay, so it involves these partial derivatives. And again, the subscripts mean, in this case, second order derivatives. Now we calculated the first order derivatives. They were here, so f sub x, x will just be 2, f sub y, y will be 2, f sub x, y will be minus a. So putting those into our d, we'll get the following. Okay, 
Okay, so over here I'll get this. All right, so basically this doesn't depend on our critical point, but it does depend on A. So now what we're going to have to do is split up the cases when A is strictly greater than 2 and when A is between 0 and 2. So So if a is greater than 2, this will be negative. So let's go to our second derivative test and see if we can make some conclusion. Well, let's look down. If d is negative, then f has a saddle point. Okay, so... Now, if A is between, strictly between 0 and 2, this is going to be positive. So, so let's have a look and see if we can find this in our second derivative test. Well, it's going to be either case 1 or case 2. And, and we need to just look at the sign of f sub xx. Well, f sub xx is 2, which is positive. So it'll be case 2. f will have a local minimum at 0, 0. local minimum. At zero, zero. Again, by the second derivative test. Now, we finished the question. We have, first of all, classified, uh, sorry, we've located our critical point and then we've classified it using the second derivative test. So let's have a look at the bigger picture though. What are some ideas you can use in all sorts of problems? Well, Assuming that f is continuous and has continuous partial derivatives up to including all of those of the second order. Now, this assumption was all automatically satisfied in our example because f was a polynomial. You, you can determine the critical points of f by solving these simultaneous equations. And once you've found the critical point, all points, you can test it using the so-called second derivative test. Now, an important part of the uh, uh, understanding of this test is knowing its limitations. If this d is zero, then the second der derivative test cannot be used. Okay, so let me just relate that back to our example. In this last um, uh, discussion, we ruled out the case a equals two. Now, if a equals two, then this is zero. Okay, so actually the second derivative test would fail if you didn't take the case um, um, a not equals two separately and that comes back to I guess the hint up here okay so it's important that you learn by doing here's some examples that I've left with you to try to determine and classify the nature of the critical points of these functions so um, you'll find that the first one is very similar to the example that that I've done and the second one a little bit trickier